Ontario, first of all, my name. Hi, uh, my name is Michael Houston. I'm coordinator of a program called uh, Selena's Living Prose and Poetry, Living Poetry and Prose, really. And we've been at it for, what, four or five years now, really. Started off as part of a homeless newspaper project, and then uh, people ended up housed. So now it's a marginalized authors program. This is our star, Rosalena Espinosa Ros de Mendoza. Excuse me, say your name, please. Rosalena Espinosa Mendoza. I, I am a local uh, author, and I publish three books right now. And this is, is my first book, and I published two in, when I have in hospitalization in Natividad Hospital about mental disorder crisis. And I need to uh, compose my poems and include it in this book. And the second book is Indivisible Proezas. Now it's in uh, Spanish um, publications, but now I work in uh, bilingual publications. So the second that we're coming out with a bilingual edition now, this is a four-year-old book, and our latest product. And that one is my new baby, it's uh, Elixir mm. the Poemas de Rosa, Rosa's Elixir Poems, included uh, more, my mind, more, um, uh, no, in crisis, uh, and my poems reflect to a lot uh, difference than the other poems because it's more stable. And that one is my baby, my baby right now. And I, he is Michael Houston. I say thank you, Michael, because he uh, looked me when I type in my, my poems in um, Chinatown Literacy Centers in Tori Soledad Streets about the project Voices of the Streets. And I'd be proud of this uh, person involved in this project because it's important in community to uh, support a homeless population, especially because I was homeless for nine years. Now I get my low income apartment and I complete one year hot house. So thank you, Lord Jesus. And I had a lot to uh, uh, plan for a project about my books. For example, I would like to invest uh, in business plan. I'm not mentioning what is my business plan, but I create my business plan right now. So we're, we're working on making this sustainable. We've, we've been very fortunate. We, the uh, supervisors of Monterey County have fund the Arts Council. And we, since we're just a group of, it was a homeless newspaper uh, collective of, of authors and friends, so we put together this a proposal to the Arts Council, and our first sponsor was the Alisal Center for the Fine Arts, which is, the, you know, it's the farm worker neighborhood, low-income neighborhood of Salinas, where you were, towards the end, before you got your apartment, yeah. you were sharing a rather nightmarish house with, how many people were living there, that, the, the one in the Alisal? Uh, the, the homeless? The horrible, no, the horrible house where you were renting a room in a house where the, the oh, people... Oh, I, I, I share my own experience. When I was homeless, I tried rent a, a, a room, and the lady, okay, approved rent um, a, a room for $450 a month. And when I go to the bathroom, it looked a line, almost 20 people, Waiting for go to the bathroom and we say, oh my God, it's more of the 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 one people live in this in this house is is, is a black business mentioned it because he he rent um more of the uh, for with me is twenty people in, in one house, and I to prefer to continue live on the street because it's a bigger problem to. Uh, uh, make relationships in one house, the people live in one room. The other is people like to stolen food in the refrigerator. They no respect in the bathroom, shampoo, so it's a big problem to live, rent one room in, uh, in the, for two. Um, two no, people in one room and 18 people in, in the rest of the house. Yeah. So that was, that was a little bit of a, a hard one. So, so anyway, 
So the, uh, the board of the Alisal Center for the Fine Arts were aware that you know, housing is a real crisis and that the, or the newspaper project was, was a worthy one because it was giving voice to homeless people, giving voice, getting, trying to get dialect law going in our community about the issues facing homeless people and getting their own stories in publication. It, it, that's an odd change because you were homeless and crazy. Yeah. And now you're going to school, you're working, your lovely husband, uh, you, you're happily together. He's, he's in job training, he's a veteran, he's had a good, long, that's a lot to offer the community as well. And so this is good, and it frees you up to continue your book. So should we go through the books one by one, or maybe we should talk about it with our other authors first. What should we do next, Rosa? I, I would like to... Um, talk about the latest book? I've read uh, 120... This is a special uh, uh, poems. Is La Grandeza de un Pétalo. So, um, so the, this whole program was developed as a presentation at the King City uh, branch of the Monterey Public Library. Oh. So here we are, and it, uh, the, as we move into, we're presenting the entire program here in the reference room to document our story. So Rosa's first piece was, she's doing a presentation to read poems, to share her story, and so should we do the first poem? And this one is called... In Spanish, is okay? You, you, I'll do the English, you do, do the Spanish, okay. how do you want to do it? Um, I'm read this poem as a special because I mentioned it about myself. It's La Grandeza de un Pétalo. Inocencia vertida en la ribera de un riachuelo, donde al nacer las corrientes de agua solo se asemejan a su primer llanto, creciendo a los insabores de la vida. Arrastra mi ser a la desembocadura cadura de un río, mas mis lágrimas acrecientan esa búsqueda por la cual fue escrita mi destino. No logro entenderlo, soy incapaz de preguntar a un ángel mi paradero, sigo su cauce para así detenerme entre sollozos. Desgarrando mi alma, mi espíritu en quebranto, lloro y llorando vago arrastrada por la nada del viento quien desliza su ternura en la grandeza de un pétalo, en flor, en semilla, la deposita sobre los pantanos, vistiendo su desnudez del frío, de la violenta prostitución, la cual la vida sumerge a una pequeña, desválida, florita a pleno atardecer en invierno. La embellece de bellos colores nocturnales en el día, crece desapercibida entre fangos hediondos. Crece bella e inocente, bella niña, mas se posan ahí las mariposas entre la fragancia infantil de la melancolía. Solo una es la valiente en descender. Una luciérnaga silvestre siempre la ilumina cuando siente desfallecer. Su alma expira al contemplar el sol. Una lágrima suya es secada por la luna. Un lucero deposita en ella una gotita de rocío de oro y plata vistiendo de fino linaje su dinastía. La grandeza de un pétalo es ver crecer en bello manantial adherida a mí la flor de loto. Flor de niña inocente, alma poeta que crece entre rimas, versos y poesía. So this, I'm just one after it. Okay. There we go. We work so closely together <laughs> and so well. So th for me, this is such a pleasure because for one thing, I've studied literature over the years and now I'm part of someone who really is an artist that's and a living artist. One of my friends was saying, I only read dead writers. No, no, no. So <laughs> this is Rose's poem as read by me. The greatness of a petal 
innocence poured into the stream bank where the currents are born, resembling one's first cry, growing up to the disappointment of life. They pull me at the mouth of the river. My tears increase with the quest, my forewritten destiny, no longer understanding the goal. I can't ask an angel where I am. I follow the riverbed, stopping to sob, carrying my soul, my spirit reeking, weeping and crying, spirit carrying, without purpose by the wind, who slid his tenderness and the greatness of a petal, the flowering seeds in the faucets of the marshes, the violent prostitute is naked in the cold, which life emerged, a small, helpless country flower. He is nourished in the winter evening, beautiful nocturnal colors embellished. On the day he grows unnoticed among the stinking mud as it grows a beautiful and innocent girl. Do more butterflies rest there? Between childhood fragrance of melancholy, only one is frayed from the fall. A wild firefly always lights when feelings fade. The soul expires when he contemplates the sun. Your tears are decried by the moon. A bright star drops gold and silver dew, wearing his fine lineage dynasty. The greatness of a petal is to see beautiful spring grow. You're attached to me, the flower of pain, love, lotus flower, flower girl, innocent soul poet, the growing between rhyme, verses, and poetry. Oh, that's, that's fun. It's um, what I feel is the same the, about the flower, the lotus, uh, grow up on the out of the mud. It's exactly what did look to uh, that's is for special my own life experience about a lot of violence around to me and that is my and my thoughts. And surviving that but I always I, as I read with you, you're talking to your son, you're talking to God, yeah. you're you're telling your story and the beauty of your poetry. Yeah. So, and you're 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 a country girl. You're, you're from down there in Chiapas. Yeah, that's as I mentioned in about uh, campus life grow, because I grew up in farmers uh, family, and that one is the reason I included this. So it's what you saw growing up yeah. as a kid, and home life was not always too beautiful. No, <laughs> but I think so. That's uh, about your positive. Do you have inside your soul, and that one it's to convert to put a beautiful something into your soul. They they say now that what sets human beings apart from the other species exactly. is our ability to tell stories. No lose human beings in any situation that you had experience is be important. Don't lose us. And your storytelling to yourself. Yeah. You you have a, a song cycle, a poetry mm -hmm. cycle, and you're going places. Give us another poem. What have you got for us? One of the other books. Do you have another poem? The other is um, maybe. She memorizes her page numbers. This is a maybe. serious reader. Um, the the title is "Do That Grow." What do do that that grow is about. My husband put me in domestic violence and put lover lady inside my house and keep me out me on the street. That when I compose these poems and do that girl. But I, this was not our, our dear Sean. This was a different person, yes. Yeah. It's Sean it's, is really nice. No, <laughs> no my and my ex husband, the okay, father of my children, okay. yeah. Okay. But I, I'm trying to read so the English. Read, uh, no, you do the Spanish? English. Okay. Let me do the Spanish. Okay. My Spanish isn't good enough. A esa tipa. Que cada mañana a tu lado siempre amanece. A esa tipa que descarada con sus caricias te enloquece. A esa tipa que de la mano llevas siempre contigo. A ella me dirijo. A ella me dirijo. 
que cobardemente te arrebató de mi lado, sin importarle el daño que me hacía al perderte. A esa tipa que celosamente te resguarda, a ella me dirijo en mi lecho de muerte. En la agonía del engaño es ella quien te deleita, los labios con sus besos apasionados, llenando tu cuerpo de embelezo, tu descaro. A esa tipa que me envía sus fotos que delatan tu traición, a ella le escribo en la letanía sincera de una mujer. Que te espere del día y de noche tu regreso. E evitas ver a tu cuerpo acariciado con lujuria y lleno de mordidas por doquier. A esa tipa que descaradamente llegó a mi vida, a esa tipa envío mis felicitaciones porque cobardemente no me atrevía a decirte a ti que ya no te amo. Mucho menos te quiero. Y anhelo el divorcio sueño de ambos. A ella flores le he sembrado para que tú las cortes de mi jardín y sea la otra la del agrado. A esa tipa que se adjudica tu fidelidad, a esa tipa que es tu amante hoy, dile que agradezco que aún permanezca a tu lado por siempre y así te deseo tu felicidad insensato. Wow, how delightful <laughs> to that girl that every morning dawns on you the sassy chick that caresses you crazy, that chick whose hand always carry with you. I dress it. You cravenly snatch from me regardless of the damage that you made me on me. To that girl you jealously protect if I turn on my deathbed, deathbed in the throes of disillusion. Is it she who delights you? Her lips filled with passionate kisses. Is she filling your body raptures? Your imprudent To that chick who sends me photos that reveal your betrayal, to her I write a sincere litany of a woman waiting for you on the day and night of your return. You avoid seeing your body caressed with love and skin with bite marks every day. To that chick who brazenly came into my life, to that chick I send my congratulations because I did not feel weak. I say to you that I no longer love you. I love dreams of longing divorce. <laughs> to her flowers, I planted them for you in the courts. My garden is another of the pleasure. To that chick that your loyalty is awarded. To that chick who's your lover today, tell him I appreciate that he still remains at your side. Although forever, I will wish you happiness, fool. This is well. the, the, the poets express, uh, that one is my own experience, and it's a bit too difficult because I'm there in the bed and I no hot, uh, um, no walking, no shower, um, close my eyes, in coma, in coma, and he, I don't care. He put me the lover lady in, into my house and came me out on the street. That's the reason I become homeless. And that one is a poem so I create and, and try include it in, in poems about my I feel it. Elixir poems, uh, I think they help you heal. And if you don't want to hear it, Uh, I'm sure you've got your own little torments in there. Have you got another nice one for us? Which book will you pull out now? That one is I uh, to. This is number three, mm -hmm. so we got your book. That one is number three. This is my first uh, 
book, Living in Infinity and Eternity, it's Bilingual Editions, uh, Indivisibles Proezas, Spanish edition, and now I almost complete Bilingual Editions, and that one is my third book, and Rosa Selection Points. Thank you, first of all, my dream. Do you want to read it from the other books, or are we done for now? What do you want to do? It's done. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, uh, this is uh, Selena's Living Poetry and Prose Project, and this is our three-time winner, three, three published books, yeah. and homeless to home, working and studying. Life gets good, <laughs> if you can dream. So, Back again, uh, Sean's joined us now. We're talking a little bit about uh, the, our, our project. This is Selena's Living Poetry and Prose. And it we gets, our funding comes through the, the, the Arts Council to help marginalized authors and homeless authors get into print, tell their stories. And it's an amazing program because people end up housed and people develop a chance, develop a chance to express themselves. So we, you know, we're rather happy about the way this is working out. We're very grateful to the Action Council of Monterey County because this collective started off as people working on a, a homeless newspaper in, in Chinatown, Salinas. And as we became friends, people ended up getting housed. I don't know how friendship had to do with it or what. So listen, now uh, Sean's with us. Sean, your wife is a poet. No, that's pretty cool. That is so that's cool, dude. Cool. So tell us that, what you guys hook up and how do you, how do you get through this, this, this world Oh, you mean one of how I meet her, or yeah, and that, and you know, do a short version of nice oh, stuff. Well, I got the coolest wife. I got the best. <laughs> wife. You know, um, she's good, man. She's smart. You know, um, I don't know what to say. Can't, but she's, there's there's some hard. I love stuff. her, man. You yeah. know, she's she's my best friend. If that's what we gotta talk about, or yeah. she just she's in the little. When you meet the dude? Oh, I met my wife. In 2010, she's walking by, and I just first Where? got my car right there by Chinatown. My friend works right there. He has a shop mm -hmm. right there. On the water, well, the auto shop. Yeah, yeah. Ralph's yeah. Auto. So she walked by. I said hi, and she said hi, and it was on. Nice. Mm -hmm. From there, I just learned, learned from her, see how she was. She married her. She, I think she was my wife before. We even got married, I think. Yeah, she's my little best friend. That's really, that's, yeah. a, that's a nice story there. Yeah, she's good. Man. So, uh, does Sean come up in your poems? Do you, do, have you, is this going to be in the next book? What are you? He, I included uh, the poems about he inspired me in the next book. As, um, I possible in this poem have one, one if possible. You have one. Sure. I got 162 pages here. <laughs> you got one. <laughs> the next book is going to get balanced out, I assure oh, you. So, <laughs> so it's a good times, bad times, hard times. Yeah. And th how are things looking for you guys now? Oh, we good. We was homeless. So, yeah. So, <coughs> excuse me. Yeah, we was homeless for like nine years. How'd you get out of that? Seven years married. So, yeah. So how'd you get through that? How'd oh, you... um, through housing. What they did, I applied for. She made me apply for it. I didn't apply for it or nothing like that. I've been locked up for 24 years you know, before I freedom. Yeah, yeah. So never less. So we applied for it in 2010. And then they denied us, denied us. Then one day they put that housing right by Chinatown. Mm -hmm. And they said that they denied me. They put me up there for it, but mm -hmm. they denied me. And so because she wasn't legal. Mm -hmm. That's why they denied me. So, to make a long story short, all this time we fighting it. Then one day, something just told me, let's go to Chinatown to go eat at Dorothy's, mm -hmm. the mission. So we went, but Action News was there. And I had my paperwork that they denied me because of the, she's not legal. And uh, they tried to sit there. What they told Action News people is that they wasn't, uh, I couldn't get it because I didn't make money or something. Mm -hmm. But I'm the head of the household, so I do, that's what that housing was for. Yeah. To make a long story short, they put it on news and all of a sudden they <laughs> called me back. It went on news. Lucky. It went on news. No. I didn't even know about it. People were telling me about it. 
to get in the window. So they called me to housing, and then they said, we got the, the housing to go, to go live. They put me back on a list. So this is work, it's working now. How long have you been housed now? Like a year. Okay. A year. And it's, account, it's okay in the place? Oh, it's cool. It's cool. There's nothing yeah. like your own place. Believe it or not, it's cool. What, where did you live? Sleeves. No, I <laughs> Where Where you only sleep with me and... Oh, we lived in a, my blazer. We had, I had a different blazer. And this one too. We lived like different streets. You were like gypsies. In yeah. The, in the Living, going to do, uh, Dorothy's Mission, but we showered at Hartnell College. Yeah. And then just boom, every night because the police would pull us over, yeah. not pull us over, but tell us, hey, you can't sleep yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. You gotta leave, so we'll go right here, there, different places. And then finally, God help me, what's it was it? Yeah, and then there was a, I just can't think of that when you're in that horrible place in the Alisal neighborhood, where you, you, did you have, you had a room with like what, 18? Oh man, roommates oh, or man. housemates? Check this one. Out. You guys gonna check this one? Out. Hey, you guys won't believe this, but what's this one? <laughs> right there on Tout Street. We went at a place. Three or seven. Yeah, Tout. And we're kicking back. I said, okay. We had a refrigerator. You know, bad little. Fr I just bought it, man. A brand new, you know, refrigerator. Mm -hmm. Because all those people go in there and eat, and they steal our food. The first day we got there, they took my milk, and I like milk. People? And, and so I'm kicking back, I'm saying, man, all of a sudden, here comes people in and out, in and out. And I'm looking, but finally I just said, hey, uh, oh, there was 12 people in the garage, oh. living in the garage. And that's not counting this room. There was 15 people all together. Okay. You know, that's not counting the owner and all that, people, and us. But nevertheless, man, that was, man. For the bathroom? The, the bathroom, I almost got in a fight for it because I was cleaning it. I'm a very yeah. clean, clean person. Clean, man. And so many people, but the, I was cleaning it and I went to go get some bleach. Mm -hmm. And this dude, is that what you guys want to hear about stories like that or what? Well, let's finish this <laughs> one. Well, let's finish this <laughs> one. I was finished you know, nah, but like I say, it was, it was awful, man. We, still had, we had no other place. And then how'd you get out to it? Oh, to funny, we, I got, no, I don't know. Oh my, uh, we just got tired of it. You just went back into the truck? Went right back to my blazer. Yeah. Yep. But now, now you're, you're, you're with camp training, you're going to... Oh, I've been working on my buddy shop for like nine years. All right. Oh yeah, I'm pretty good at I'm all right. Nice. You know, not to brag, but yeah. And you got a wife to good talk to. Yeah. <laughs> all right. That's my little lady boss. But yeah. So, uh, this is... Life do go on and life, uh, yeah. so enjoy it, be kind, be but, loving. But on, since let me just yeah, ask, I believe that this, this is life, man. This, let's go like this. Chinatown, this is what I say about life and people. Mm -hmm. You make choices in life. There ain't no, I don't know if you guys believe in peer pressure or whatever. He talked about homeless. Okay, well, let's go with homeless. People that are homeless, believe it or not, they could get out of it if they choose to. They have to choose to, you know, whether you're a dope fiend or whatever, it don't matter what you are. If you want to get out of that place, all you have to do is set your mind to where you know what I'm tired of. Because people use that as, I'm homeless, let's go over here. But if they go to Chinatown, what's going to happen in Chinatown, they're going to get turned out by choice. And I say that because there's this, there's people that have asked me do do this, drugs, whatever. Mm -hmm. But peer pressure, that's when they, when they say yeah, it's peer pressure. Yeah. But if they say no, what does that mean? Oh, I just made a choice to say no, instead of just going all right. So when people say there are bad, no bathrooms in Chinatown, yeah, but if you really want to rectify something in Chinatown, this is what you do. This is my opinion as from homeless, and I dealt with everybody there. I just chose not to pick it. Thank you for supporting my learning.